Hello and welcome to this video where we look at the sort formulas in Excel. Sort and sort by. And we look at three examples of their use. So these functions are incredible. They are only available to those of you on Microsoft 365 and they allow us to automate the sorting of our data. Absolutely fantastic for our reports and our dashboards. Two of the most popular buttons in Excel are your sort and your filter buttons and we finally have formulas to automate those processes for us. So for these first examples, I have a table of issues with the center, who the issue has been assigned to, when it was received, a level, and then whether it's been solved or not. And for a first simple example, I want a unique list of the centers so that I can use that in a drop down list in cell G5. And ideally, that would be sorted in A to Z order. But over time, in this table of issues, I may have more or less centers appear. So I want to automate that process. I don't want to be having to manually edit my drop down and sort it. So in cell J1, I'm going to type a formula to create the items for that list. If I type equals unique, let's get a unique list to begin with another function in Microsoft 365, open bracket, and I'll just reference the center in that issues table. Close bracket and press enter, and I've got those four different centers, but they're not in A to Z order. So if I come back to the original formula, I'm going to wrap a sort function around that. And for now, that's all I'm going to do in the next example, I'll explain some of those options in the sort function a little more. For now, I just want to close bracket the other side, press enter. Now that list is in ascending order. And in cell G5, I'll quickly create a drop down list for it. So it's going to be a list. And for the source, I'm going to reference my dynamic array in J1. For anyone who's not too familiar with the dynamic array formulas, I have a video which explains them in detail. But that hashtag right now is the spilled reference. If I click OK, I now have that drop down list and I can choose something like Springfield from it. But here's the really cool thing. At the bottom of the issues table, if I add in a new center, I'll just put in London and as soon as I move off that cell we can see in column J that London is picked up as a center and the list has automatically sorted itself meaning that my drop down list in cell G5 is now also in order. How awesome is that? We now have formulas to automatically sort our data. Let's look at the sort function in a little bit more detail. If I come and delete that new entry I made, and underneath that drop down list, I'm going to quickly type a filter function to extract some information from that list. Now I'll go through this quite quickly. I also have a video on the filter function, and I'll put links to these in the description of this video. But the array I want to return from the issues table is the assigned to, the received, and the level. So I'm going to select those, comma, what to include. Let's open up my brackets. I want to only include the issues that are outstanding. So I want to know if the solved column of that table is equal to no. And I'm going to put in my asterisk for and logic because I also want to be sure that the center is the one that's mentioned in cell G5. And I'll just close off that filter function at that point. And that is filtering that list 
and returning only the ones from Springfield that have not been solved. And at the moment it's pulling them out in the order that it is in the issues table. But I want to sort all three of those columns. Now to begin with I'd like to sort them so that the issues that were received the longest time ago would be at the top. So in this example that should be the 7th of May. So coming into that first cell where I have the filter function, if I begin the sort function just before it, the first argument in sort is the array to sort. And the answer to that is the existing filter function. So I'm going to click all the way at the end of this filter function, comma, and now we have the question of the sort index. We have to provide an index number, just like we do with VLOOKUP, that instructs the sort function which column, assigned to, received, or level, is the one we want to sort by. In this example, it's received, so the answer is two. That is the second column of the array. Another comma will ask us for the sort order. Is it ascending or is it descending? One for ascending minus one for descending. Now I'm going to ignore that question because I want ascending and that's the default. So if I backspace that comma and close off the bracket and press enter, the filtered array is now sorted. So the 7th of May at the top, working down to the more recent issue received. You can imagine how useful that is in your reports that I'm returning multiple columns now with a filter function and it's automatically being sorted by the column that I choose. But now we're going to sort it by multiple columns because before we sort it by the date received, I'd like to sort it by the level. We have levels one, two and three and I want to imagine that level three is the most important one. So I want those at the top of the list, working down to level one. Now with Springfield here, I've only got one of each. So for a better example here, I'm actually going to come back into this filter function and I'm going to remove the criteria for the center. So we've got more data in which to look at. And this will be a better example. So coming back into that formula, and if I click where I have the number two, instructing to sort it by the received column, and I'm going to type in a curly brace. I'm going to enter an array of constants inside this formula. And before number two, I want number three, because this is the level column. That is the third column of the filtered array. A comma, so the second sort index column will be received, number two. Closing curly brace, and a comma brings us on to the sort order argument from before. Now the level I want sorted in descending order. Level three at the top, working down to level one. So open curly brace, it's minus one for descending by column three from the previous array of constants, comma one because I want the received column to be in ascending order, closing curly brace. There is one more argument in the sort function asking if we're sorting by a column or not because we could be sorting by row. Now that's quite a rare argument to have to worry about because normally we're sorting the columns like now. So I'm ignoring that and running this formula we can see the list is now sorted descending by level and where the levels are the same, such as levels two and three, where there are multiples, you can see the sort by the received column takes over. I can see on the 12th of May, there's actually two issues, Monica and Kyle. So if I did want to take this one step further, I could even come into that formula again and after column three, I could put comma one, which is the assigned to column. And then after the one from previous, put comma one. So that is also an ascending order. 
so that when I press enter, now Kyle is above Monica in the list because A to Z it would come first. So that was the sort function. Let's have a look at a function called sort by and when you would use a function like that. So I'm on the sort by sheet and I've got a simple list of products and some values here. In column H, I've returned a unique sorted list of the products. And in column E, if we have a look, I have a sum ifs function, which is totaled in the cells for each of those products. Now, first of all, the sum ifs function I have, let's sort that in descending order. And we already know how to do that from the previous examples. We come into the formula and around some ifs, we wrap that sort function, which prompts us for the array to sort by, which is the sum ifs function and the values we can already see being returned. If I put a comma for the sort index, we only have one column in this array. So it's a pointless question and I could just carry on with a comma and get to the index. However, it might make more sense to answer it anyway. So I'm going to type number one, which is the only possible option because I've only got one column. A comma, I need this question, it's minus one. I want the values in descending order, so that 1089 should be at the top. Close bracket and enter, and yes it is, working down to 104. What we now need to do though is return the products. Before we look at doing that, let me come in and take a copy of that sum ifs function because we are going to need it. I'm going to copy that, escape that formula and come into cell D5 where I want to return the products related to those sorted values. Now this time we're using a function called sort by and this function allows us to sort an array by a column that's not in the array being sorted. This is what I mean. The array I'm sorting is cell H1 and then that hashtag to spilled range. That's what I'm sorting, the names of the products, comma. But the column I'm sorting it by is not in that sorted range. I want to sort it by the values, not the products. So I'm going to put in the sum ifs function here. That's why I copied it. Because I need to return those values that the sum ifs function did in column E. Because that's what I'm sorting it by. A comma brings us on to the sort order, which is that descending order minus one. And you can see the sort by function is prompting for additional columns to sort by, just like we did with the sort function before, although we had to put those into an array, whereas the sort by function has this functionality built in. So a close bracket and pressing enter, and they are the products. To confirm, if I selected the values for chocolate, in this table, down the bottom, I can see that the sum is 1089, so it's successfully sorting that product range. The sort and sort by functions are fantastic. I hope you enjoyed this video and find it useful. Please subscribe so that you are notified when new Excel tips and tutorials are released. Thank you for watching, I'll see you again soon.